Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Right. And it's Rare Whiskey Friday and Dry Week is coming. Yes. Okay. So Winter first, first, is coming. First, we yeah. get through the Rare Whiskey Friday opening. Mm -hmm. By the way, my performance last time. It was pretty good. I think we both hit our best performances right. in the last two. The bar two. set incredibly high. So we can either have this multiplier effect where we, we become literally, you watch us become gods of saying the same thing over and over again. Or we fail horribly, crash and burn right in front of you. And it's your turn. Um, yes. So dry week. Checking is Tinder. I'm just uh, making sure I have dry week. All right. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go through and sample a few whiskeys. Some are large brands. More often than not, they are small brands without a large amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in an area where you can get your hands on one of these bottles, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastard that sent it in. Wait, wait, was that a, was that a final <laughs> gasp at the end? No, that was, yeah. a, that was a pressing through. Okay. I, and that was really good then. Well, the, no, the end. Gallon the shrimp. You have to get the full body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> body yeet out the word so dry week yes when is that is november 12th friday noon november 12th to friday noon november 19th dry week is the optional week where the community is going to take a week off from alcohol just to check in make sure that you don't have any issues sneaking up on you and we have the quarterly challenge at the end of the dry week if you had chosen to participate and you successfully completed it we're gonna have a list of quarterly challengers <laughs> Where you can put your name on the list, put it up on the website amongst all of the hallowed challengers who have successfully completed their dry week for fame and glory. And um, glory. Yes. And wav, true wav. This is a Colorado distillery, 291. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of winning here. Yeah, there's a lot of the stickers on that bottle. So, and it's a gift from magnificent bastard Jeremiah Dickinson. Jeremiah Dickinson, you magnificent bastard. He sent in all four bottles that we're going to drink today. Oh, okay. And um, this is a single barrel Saint of Dickinson 291. Day. Ooh. Aged less than two years. I don't know how you can get away with that one, but you really can. Um, they take this whiskey... Aged, uh, distilled in copper pot, put in oak, and then, oh, and then finished with aspen staves. Aspen staves? Aspen. Maybe that's what I'm getting on the nose, because there is this bright clarity. This, ac Whoa. this acute, like, ding, a flavor that just flies right through the center of, center of this. It is... Wood and green apple. Yeah. Yeah. And bright and clear and fresh and loud. Wooden green apple. Mm-hmm. You know that aspen staves are made from asp snakes. Wood asp snakes. Most people don't know that. So, for you to be so condescending to think. Oh man, I did it again. That I didn't already know that. Yeah, my bad. You've learned a lot more on this channel than I give you credit for. Are you still bleeding? I, I, I scratched my arm. Again? Now. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> this place. Is, look, he was bleeding out a few days ago. I jumped in. I saved his life. Yeah. I'm an EMT. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> most people don't know that. As long He's as running on an EMT. As, EMT. As long as just like bullshit. Jackson Brown. God damn. <laughs> so now he has another open wound. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That one just... Just spontaneously bleeding. Yeah. What the hell, man? Maybe I've got the plague. <laughs> All right, back on the nose. <laughs> that green apple note. And, and then, wood. And it's so strong. I can't get past those two things together. You know what? I the think the astringent tea note underneath this. Yeah, maybe honey. Oh, it tastes exactly like it smells. Wow. But the wood takes over on the finish. It does this green apple, honey, black tea, and then an astringency kind of tannic note comes out of the These, end. Here's the thing. Usually whenever you get into really bright, crisp flavors in whiskey, usually it's not an experience that I'm particularly fond of because it comes, often comes with like a brittle, quit bleeding on the paper. 
You're I'm, just collecting blood splatter. I know, I'm trying to stop it. This is, this is so weird and gross. <laughs> it is. I don't know what happened. Uh, and I was making a good point. Yeah, yeah, usually when you get these flavors. Yeah, yeah. It becomes with like this brittle quality. Yeah. To it. This is loud and clear and I'm gonna say the word piercing, or, but I don't mean that in a bad but way. But it's dense. So imagine if an Irish green apple note yeah. was surrounded by molasses and wood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, did they win like legit stuff? Because people will put a, a sticker. You'll have some. No, it's like best whiskey your mom helped you make. Yeah, some yeah, then, poor intern. <laughs> it's just like, how many more stickers you want on this? Yeah. All Jesus, right. can we just put this on one roll? <laughs> uh, so this is a 2018 double gold for the wine, for the mm -hmm. world wine and spirits. San Francisco World Spirits Competition, double gold 2016. Yeah, but that couldn't have been this single barrel. No. Maybe wasn't. the single barrel release from these guys. Right. But, like, they really took one barrel and made it last across three years of competitions. <laughs> like, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Spirits competition. This is the Denver International. This is the Spirits Business Gold 2018. The People's Choice Breckenridge Craft Spirits Festival. Mm. Yeah, here's the thing. It's good. I don't know what whether or not these awards were actually attributed to this whiskey mm -hmm. that came out of the barrel that it came out of. I do know. I really like it, though. Yeah. And I like how it didn't take the most common path for whiskeys that I end up enjoying. Yeah. Which is a lot of bass and heft and body and thick, rich. This is loud, bright, crisp, piercing flavors. But they work beautifully. And what did we say the proof was in here? It's fifty percent ABV, yeah. hundred proof. Oh, we're supposed to be rare whiskey Friday. Oh, this, though. hi. But, so here's the thing. I don't want to do this because I'm literally the one that's going to have to clean these glasses when we're done because yeah. we're all getting ready for a private academy. Yeah. But I can't see a way around it, so we're going to do it. Wow. The next three bottles. One of them is a duplicate bottle, and I don't know. Let me look real quick. I forgot to look before we hit start, but I don't see it. If I don't see it quickly, we're going to move on. Don't worry. What is the top of that bottle? I'm to keep you entertained. What color is the top of that? I can't look, Daniel. I'm entertaining the people. Yes. I can't. Don't distract me. I can't look. This is premium content. <laughs> this is as good as it gets on the internet. <laughs> on the internet? Hurry up, Daniel. No, I'm trying to let you get some cardio. How much sachet do you think I have in me? I <laughs> said... Not enough. He's not doing anything. You're just standing there. You <laughs> <laughs> what color is that? I think I might have done it. I did it. By Jove, he did it. Okay. Oh, it only took me giving up, and then he. So one of the bottles that uh, he reviewed, we already had. For this is so these are three bottles from Axe and Oak, another Colorado distillery. But here's what they're doing. They're sourcing MGP. Should we do a benevolent? Thing? Uh, well, sure. We'll uh, we'll also give him a benevolent bastarding. Jeremiah Dixon. Is benevolent bastard. Jeremiah Dixon, you benevolent bastard. So this is the bottle we already had. Yeah. But the reason I want to pour it again and keep in track of these from your left to your right is because this is MGP mixed with their own bourbon. And we have three. Yeah. The normal one and a port finish one. And then we have the rye. Okay. And all three of them are MGP, then mixed with their whiskey. So it's a blend of MGP and these guys. So I appreciate how much this isn't obviously MGP. MGP. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I wouldn't have guessed MGP on the nose. Their blend turned it into a new thing. And rye is going to be last. Okay. Okay, so it's bourbon followed by bourbon finished in port cask followed by rye. Rye's here? Yeah. Okay. So bourbon mm -hmm. and then bourbon port cask. And you're right, the bourbon doesn't taste blatantly MGP. Hmm. It's less oaky than mm -hmm. the MGP and there's less, less brown sugar. It's a very classic nose. Here's the thing. But it's not MGP standard nose. You know, I wonder if they've now started doing their own because that was what was written about them even on their website, but none of these bottles mention. Does it distilled in wherever? No, it just says produced and bottled. Yeah, you never know. You never know what that produced means. Produced, I mean anything. Yeah. But this has malted rye in it. 
Okay. So maybe not. Okay. So it might not be MGP anymore. Whoa! Did you taste that bourbon? Yeah, what is that? Is that that is super sweet candy. It's like, is that a cherry candy? Yeah. Oh. Whoa, like like the kind, you ever get those cherry candy, is it cherry or strawberry? They were in the wrapper that looked like what they were, the strawberry ones. And then they had like and then a, they had gooey, a center. gooey center. The gooey center candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah that really is the gooey And that's center. not, oh, you know why? Mm. I got them backwards. Oh. That's the port cask. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the strawberries come yeah. from. Okay. Good so, night. Yeah. Okay. I was picking up the tawny port one. No me. wonder it's. Wait. Did you bleed on your glass? Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Quit bleeding. Sorry. Why are you bleeding I everywhere? Don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the tawny. I can't do this. <laughs> this is like your bodily fluids <laughs> just leaking out of you. <laughs> like I got this one to stop with pizza paper. Oh man. All right. The tawny port is raw bourbon candy. Wow, that port is so sweet. That is too much for me. That is well, that is dessert liqueur. You know what? Uh, uh, so, mm. like a finishing barrel. Yeah. Usually, there's going to be an accent. Every once in a while, though, somebody will have some slosh in the bottom. Yeah, I feel like you this think was maybe some there's slosh? slosh, or I don't know. It feels like some slosh because it, there, here's the thing: there may not be slosh, but it's be. just so obvious of an right. impact. Yeah, usually it's not subtle. Yeah, not subtle. Usually, an accent flavor happens with a finishing, but damn, this is just wow! You mm -hmm. want port and you want whiskey? Have we got a bottle for you? Wait, why did I have bourbon? Bourbon? Oh, I know why. He's bleeding out. He's losing Here. blood to the brain. I can't so believe I did that. Can't keep up with. Yeah, I really can't keep up with what's happening right now. Did um, you just pour mine out? Yeah, here's why. Because that's not even open. Yeah, because you I, dick. I did bourbon, <laughs> bourbon. I grabbed the bottle next to the one I was reaching for and then opened it while Look, not looking. And we sample and we say, you know what? They have a signature flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Across all their bottles. We really would. <laughs> Incline rye. Okay, let's go to the rye. Wow, that's Woo! Uh, that is that green. Is a big old ripe, spicy rye. Ooh, that is cut grass, man. Fresh you know cut grass and herbs. I like rye the same way that I like IPAs now. Oh, okay. Situationally, yeah, it is the best thing. I don't like IPAs at all, but I like rye situationally. Situationally, it's the best thing, the best whiskey that I would want. So I'm doing like an IPA with uh, like greasy food, barbecue, pizza, something like that. With the rye, it'd probably be something similar, something with that big, bright flavor set to cut through any type of super savory, greasy foods. This is almost cilantro. What? Yeah. There's almost a green cilantro-like note in there. I would say herbal. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say cilantro. Mm -hmm. Cilantro is very, very specific. I know, that's what I'm saying. I, uh, I but then it, in the palate, it turns into mint. Like a almost a peppermint mint, but fresh green actual mint plant. I was watching this show with my wife on Netflix called Made, ah. mm -hmm. and it's, it's very depressing. Amazingly well acted, but it's depressing because it's so realistic. Mm. Anyways, there's this single mom, uh, and her mom's kind of nuts, and her mom has a boyfriend, and the boyfriend's name is Basil, and he always called calls the boyfriend cilantro, which I find very funny because she hates him, and he's a fake Australian. A fake Australian? Yeah. He's okay. conning the mom. Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, he has a place to live and support his... I don't I want to spoil it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm never going to watch it because I don't watch depressing TV on purpose. It's just very... Like, here's the thing. I have two criteria. If it keeps me guessing what's going to happen, I have to finish it. I'm watching another show right now. Horrible. I hate it. I can't get through it because I keep falling asleep mm. every time. It's the worst. Another Life... It's like a sci-fi show. Okay. It's got two seasons. Katie so why Sackoff, are you still trying Katie to Katie Sackoff from the Battlestar Galactic yeah. series. She was Starbucks. She was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love Katie Sackoff. She's in this thing, so I watch it. I hate this show, but I have no idea what's going to happen. It's the worst show. It's oh. so dumb. Uh, but every night, I try, and I'll get through like half an episode, and I'll fall asleep. So, Maid's the same That's way. better than sleep it's, meds. It's depressing, uh, and it's supremely well acted, which mm. is something I can say is better than another life. Uh, and I don't know what's gonna happen. Hmm. Okay. So you just became much more interesting because 
I don't know where you're going to bleed from next. <laughs> yeah, it could be anywhere. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we gave any no, of this, but it's, I, a, it's a rare whiskey Friday. So first impressions, I I, think, I did. It's a little sharp, but okay. <laughs> well, we'll go with it. <laughs> I, I did everything. <laughs> I think these two were really nice. This too sweet. is so heavy-handed with Damn. the port, though, but I know there's some people that just love port. They would really like what shows up in there. It's just, man, if you're only familiar with the accent flavoring that a finishing barrel does, this is going to come across as very heavy-handed. Returning to the 291. I think that's my standout of this lineup today. See, I went back to the port thing. I went back to the bourbon and liked it best of those three. They're all really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the body stealing and drink. Fight me and fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us.